not be the same. A few people laughed. A few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. The atomic bomb ended World War II, one of the most catastrophic wars in history, while revolutionizing weaponry and methods of warfare. The innovations of this weapon frightened people with the possibility of nuclear war, while nations around the globe raced to develop the bomb for their own. It changed the limits of military power by creating a new form of weapon that could demolish full cities and kill thousands of people in a manner that was practically unstoppable. In 1939, two physicists, Leo Szilard and Eugene Wegener, drafted a letter warning about a new type of bomb with power that had never been seen before. In order to be taken seriously, they had Albert Einstein sign it and sent it to Franklin D. Roosevelt. Two years later, FDR held a meeting on October 9, 1941, where a program designed to develop this bomb was approved. This program would later be referred to as the Manhattan Project. By the end of 1946, the project undertook 130,000 people and cost the U.S. government over $2 billion. After years of countless studies and research efforts, two possible bomb designs have been concluded on, a uranium gun assembly bomb and a plutonium implosion bomb. Finally, on July 16, 1945, the atomic bomb was ready for testing. At 529, Mountain War Time, the greatly anticipated Trinity test took place in Jornado del Muerto Valley, New Mexico. It exploded with a power of 21,000 tons of TNT and completely demolished the steel tower on which it was detonated. It started with a great flash of light, followed by a sudden heat wave and burst of sound. A giant blast ended with a ball of fire and mushroom cloud that stretched 40,000 feet across. On July 26, 1945, President Truman made a final statement to Japan, declaring them to agree with the decision to end the war. When the Japanese denied the request, President Truman began planning with a group of his closest advisors about when and how to use the atomic bomb, and in the early hours of August 6, 1945, the Enola was loaded and ready to leave Tinian Airport to drop the highly explosive bomb in Hiroshima. We uh, got off at about uh, 3 o'clock in the morning, in the darkness, and headed for Iwo Jima. We felt that it was our lucky day. We knew it was as we made the final approach toward Hiroshima. Everything went with perfection, not approached in the rehearsals. A bomb was finally released exactly at the designated hour, and the explosion occurred as planned. Before leaving the airport at 2.45 a.m., the aircraft made its way to Iwo one of the Japanese volcano islands where it stopped at 8,010 feet and set course for its target. Shortly after, at precisely 8.15 a.m., the gravity-pressured bomb known as Little Boy took less than a minute to fall and explode over Hiroshima with a force of 20,000 tons of TNT. When the mushroom cloud cleared, the overwhelming damage caused by the 1.2-mile incinerating area was shown. Within three miles of the epic center, more than half the buildings had been destroyed. An estimated 70,000 people died on that groundbreaking day from the blast and the fires that followed. All people killed on impact died within a second. One survivor described the damage of the victims' bodies. They all had skin blackened by burns. They had no hair because their hair was burned. Their skin hung down and everywhere I walked I met these people, many of them along the road. I can still picture them in my mind. The world will note that the first atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima a military base. We won the race of discovery against the Germans. We have used it in order to shorten the agony of war, in order to save the lives of thousands and thousands of young Americans. We shall continue to use it until we completely destroy Japan's power to make war. 
Three days after the attack on Hiroshima, the United States launched a second nuclear attack on Nagasaki, a city in Japan. On August 9th, the plane boxcar left Tinian Island carrying Fat Man, a plutonium implosion bomb that weighed 10,000 pounds and was 10 feet 8 inches long. This was to be the last atomic bomb ever used in war. At 11.02 a.m., Fat Man was detonated 500 meters above Nagasaki. As the debris from the blast settled, the wreckage caused by Fat Man showed that although the blast was larger than Little Boy's, because of the terrain of Nagasaki, it did considerably less damage. An area of about 2.3 by 1.9 miles was destroyed by the bomb, and the flash created fires that spread throughout the city. 40% of the city had been damaged, and there is an estimated 70,000 casualties by the end of December 1945. On September 2nd, 1945, more than two weeks after accepting the terms of which their country was in, Japanese government officials signed the Japanese Instrument of Surrender aboard the United States Navy battleship, the USS Missouri. With that, World War II had ended. Many Americans thought of the atomic bomb as a good thing, even if it meant the death of thousands of Japanese whether they admitted it or not. However, American media seemed to avoid the topic and little praise was released in print. Despite this, two weeks after the bombing in Nagasaki, a Gallup poll was taken asking whether or not Americans approved the use of the bomb on Japan. 85% approved, 10% disapproved, and 5% had no opinion. They were also asked if the creation of the bomb itself was a good thing or a bad thing. 69% said it was a good thing, 17% said it wasn't, and 14% had no opinion. Whether the bomb was viewed in a negative or positive light, it was inevitable that it was going to drastically change things. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki drastically changed weaponry and warfare, marking a time for a new military epoch, and in return, spiraled the world into a nuclear age. Only four years after the reveal of the atomic bomb, the Soviet Union successfully completed its first test. This terrified the world, and the race of nuclear ascendancy became the main focus of the Cold War. The arms race had begun. United States, July 16, 1945. Soviet Union, August 29, 1949. Great Britain, October 3, 1952. France, February 13, 1960. China, October 16, 1964. India, May 18, 1974. Pakistan, May 28, 1998. North Korea, October 9, 2006. In the 1950s and 60s, the U.S. and Soviet Union were constantly upgrading and adding to the nuclear weapon supply. Each time the United States would improve the atomic bomb, the Soviet Union would be close to follow. This sparked fear of a nuclear confrontation between the two countries. During this time, conflicts such as the Soviet blockade of Berlin increased the tension. Schools began holding drills to teach kids how to react in case of missile attack, and nations were hard at work attempting to develop some form of defense. While other countries raced to generate the bomb, the United States and Soviet Union were spending billions of dollars on innovations. In 1952, the United States created the first H-bomb, 450 times as powerful as the bomb used on Nagasaki. In 1953, the Soviet Union completed its first hydrogen bomb. As technology became more refined, so did the developments. Upgrades were made to make the bomb smaller, more powerful, and increase the range. In 1957, the Soviet Union launched the Sputnik satellite and aroused fear of a possible missile attack from space. More additions included underground missile silos, rockets that could carry multiple bombs, and intercontinental ballistic missiles. In 1960, the United States created submarines which would carry 16 missiles, each with four warheads that could target different locations. By the 1970s, there were five nuclear powers. In order to prevent nuclear war and mass destruction, the United States, Soviet Union, France, China, and Great Britain created the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, which was signed by 116 other nations. Until the 1980s, defense for full-scale attacks seemed out of reach, but that changed when the U.S. started the Strategic Defense Initiative. This project was created so that a machine could be made that could capture or damage a bomb as it was re-entering the atmosphere. Some suggestions were intercepting rockets and laser beams that would shoot from satellites and destroy the missiles in a layer of defense, giving the chance to attack in the three stages of flight, the boost, the mid-course, and the re-entry. The creation of the atomic bomb allowed for new possibilities of aerial attack providing a weapon that was unavoidable and unpredictable at the time. It shuffled the world into the nuclear age and sent nations into a panic with the possibility of a weapon that had enough power to take many lives and do incalculable damage. It unleashed a new type of weapon with which all nations had a mutual enemy and changed the way weapons and warfare was handled forever.